Zendaya, Josh, Mike. Actually, let me do that again. <laughs> a great nice start. To meet you. <laughs> let me try that again. <laughs> Zendaya, Mike, Josh. Nice. Welcome to 7:30. Right. Only took one rehearsal. <laughs> it is very unusual for us to interview three actors at once, but okay, it's a love triangle, so it makes sense, right? So let's start with that, Zendaya. What was the appeal of this film to you? Um, oh man, I think there was there was many things. I, I just remember reading it for the first time and it um I, I have a hard time like reading scripts. I don't know if you guys have that. I just immediately you kind of either know whether it connects with you or not. And this is something that like I couldn't stop like turning the page and wanting to know. Um, and, and I felt like every time I read it, I, I felt differently about my character, about their characters, and there was just so much um, being said on the page, but I think also so much that was unsaid. You just said you just said it was a page turner because you wanted to know you wanted to know what happened. So did you want to know who you ended up with? I, I wanted to know everything. <laughs> yeah. I still, I mean, I think I'm still confused. I, I, I think Me every too. time I watch it, I'm like, what? I, I, I question their decisions. I'm wondering. Um, why they make the choices that they make, and I think that's what's so fascinating about it. And every time I watch, I empathize with, with, with a different character. Now, of course, in the film, your character Tashi Duncan is obviously the the kind of son that has this gravitational pull for these two. You tell me who your character Tashi Duncan is. Who is she? Um, <laughs> <laughs> complicated, to say the least. Um, I think she's. Um, I mean, she's a go getter, and I think she's. Uh, very, I don't know, I guess you say ruthless in the way that she um, goes after the things she wants and needs. And I think I often say that like this, that tennis really is just like a metaphor and it's a, you know, outlet in which they use to just stay connected to each other and, and depend on each other and wield power over each other and hurt each other. Um, and yeah, I just think that she's, I don't know, incredibly complicated. Josh, what about you? Just tell me about the experience of working with Luca. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were all kind of, I think we were all so obsessed with the script and we had such a, we were really fortunate to have a really good prep period on it. So I think we were training for like, what was it like four or five weeks or something? I think it was six. Six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and we would train in the morning and then we'd rehearse. And so we'd all sit around a table, which is really rare for a film generally, but particularly something like this. And um, and we would just kind of like bash through the scenes and Luke would throw stuff at us and we'd throw it back or <laughs> do what he told us to do. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was like kind of thrilling. I feel like it's been, it was such a mad experience in terms of the script is like a drug from the beginning to end. It's like a shotgun's sent off and then it just rides through. And I sort of felt like that with the whole shooting process. Every day was like we were rushing, not rushing through it, but felt like we were achieving so much so quickly. You just you just referred to, to the tennis. Of course, this is a tennis movie and you three incredibly had to learn to play tennis. I know it's yeah. not the first time it's ever been done, but still to get from not being brilliant tennis players to tennis players who can look real on stage. Zendaya had been, uh, <laughs> oh, she, that was gonna uh -huh. be her other career choice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was, the people yeah. didn't know. Don't talk down to her about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about you because actually uh, the director says that you were extremely intense in your preparation. <laughs> is, he, is that not true? You, I mean, he was the most. Mike's the best yeah, tennis player. There's was, no two yeah. ways about it. Yeah, he was better from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and also like a lot better. <laughs> a lot better than the and uh definitely I think uh fairly enough outworked us in in, yeah. in many aspects. Yeah. But but Mike, did were you able to turn yourself mentally into an elite athlete because that's very different to a couple of respectable ground strokes and a bit of a volley. Fair. That's a good question. I think uh, and I think that there's actually more similarities than there are differences in that regard. And maybe you guys can kind of find that's at least how I was able to, I think, connect to my character in the sense of uh, what was going on in his head. Uh, and that kind of when you choose to do something that you're passionate about and you choose to pursue it to excellence and to like the highest caliber. Mm. which is what we're all trying to do, you know, with what we do, uh, there's a similar mentality with it regardless. And so 
I kind of, I understood, I understood the desire to um, get better. I understood the love for it. I also understood uh, the, the not, you know, the falling out of love with it, I think, is a big part of it as well, and the complications that go along and when life happens, too. Um, so uh, for me, at least, the mental part of it was probably the easiest thing. But did the physical help you get to the mental? Um, you know, <laughs> she's her mindset is very different from mine, <laughs> OK? We are very, very different. And I think, like you said, it's finding your way into different characters, right? So while the circumstances and the choices that they make in life may be very different, where do we connect? And I think the connection, I think, that I felt for her is this idea of, of, of grief and loss of a career and a life that she thought she was going to have. And this idea that if there was a world where I was something, my life, my career, or whatever was taken away from me before I really got an opportunity to do what I love to do, um, I really empathized with that, mm -hmm. that loss and that idea. Um, and I think ultimately that's what she's grappling with in a much messier way than I think I would. But, um, but ultimately that, that's how I, you know, I found her. Come back to the relationship between the three of you. As we know, um, Guadagnino uses sexual attraction in his films. It flows in this film back and forward, forward and backwards between the three of you in an extraordinarily powerful way. You get this question. How does he, <laughs> because <laughs> you're English, yeah. I've chosen Thanks. you, how does yeah. he work with you on the intimate scenes in the sensual sexual scenes? How does it work? Well, I think in some way, I mean, the As film... As a director, I mean. Yeah, he's... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 I'm so You need sorry. a chiropractor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, continue. Um, <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the essential, yeah, yeah, intimate. Um, well, I, I mean, I feel like the, the film generally is kind of madly intimate, whether it's mm. the intimate, the traditional intimate scenes or the tennis play. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, arguably, the most intimate the three of them are is when they're on the tennis court. Mm. And I think that was always kind of, that was always clear in Justin's script, but I, I think Luca really got that from day one and, and had a real sense of, like, and that really comes across in the film, this sense of finding that intimacy and that sexiness of when, they, when they're on the court and kind of battling against each other. And I think that's why, as Z said, there's a kind of like, the coming together of the three of them at the end feels so much about intimacy. I was listening, trying to find you talking about different parts of your career. And I heard you say that you used to be a very, very shy child. I am still, yeah. Do you, do you, are you still? Absolutely, yeah. No, this is all <laughs> an act. <No. laughs> but it's true. I mean, I, I am an actor and, you know, and I think fashion in many ways is like the, the shield, the guard. It's the mm. thing to like become a character, to come out here and do the interviews and do the things. And then I take it off and I'm, you know, they've seen the, <laughs> the other version. Which, you know, which that's is... That's the thing that's, like, really common with actors. Yeah. I think, you know, more often than not, we are putting on, like, a, a face. It's really hard. Most people, most actors that I've come across, we're all kind of deeply insecure <laughs> and trying to find stuff about ourselves <laughs> and hide stuff about ourselves and playing characters that kind of don't reveal us so much. Zedo, was there anything in Tashi Duncan that you, you know, took away from her, that creation of the screenwriter? Oh. You know, or, or were you happy to let her go? <laughs> I think it's fun in the sense of, you know, she's just so blunt and straightforward and unapologetic, and I am not that. Uh, I think, you know, I um, am most often terrified of hurting other people's feelings or but it's making within you. someone else feel. But that's the thing, right? Yeah. It's within you. Yeah. And that's where it's like, well, let me, <laughs> but let me explore that muscle. What it feels like. Yeah. Even, but, and you don't have to, to rip cure. someone down. <laughs> yeah, but you don't like, have to, you, like, don't have you to know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's just actually, intense. yeah. And yeah. it's like, well, let me flex that and, like, see what that is. Yeah. And it's a nice thing. Yeah, I guess so. So, just finally, when obviously you're going through. This movie is part of it. You are going through um, a moment of extreme celebrity. A lot of young girls talk about wanting to be you or be like you. How do you respond to those young girls? So they're not, you're not way older than them, but you're just that 
little little generation older than them experiencing that? Yeah, um, I think I think if anything, I try. I want to remind people that I'm just a person, just a human like anybody else. I am nowhere near perfect, as no one is, um, and that and that I'm still figuring it out. And if anything, my path looks different than yours. Yours is extraordinarily your own, and I'll never be able to do the things you can do, you know? So it's just about, I think, living in and existing um, wholly as, as whoever it is that you wanna be, and knowing that I'm doing the same. And I'm trying to be, um, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to be myself every day. And that it's okay. It's okay to take your time, and it's okay not to know and it's okay to, to stumble and be confused and all these kinds of things because that's just, that's just part of living life and being a human being and that's, that's all we can do. So if anything, it's just about like me existing as myself and hoping that uh, that in some way allows someone to exist as themselves. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, 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 hopefully that That's answers great advice. some of oh the question. <laughs> it is exactly as you say, great advice. You've brought us um, an extraordinary film and the relationship that we, you can still see between you is, is part of what we can see on film. And it's an extraordinarily intense thing to watch in the film and a pleasure to see it in real life. Thank, thank you, you. Mike, so Zendaya, thank you so Josh. Thank you very much indeed. Zendaya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs>